Cells contain a semi-permeable membrane, which basically means certain materials will pass across the membrane while others will be blocked. The question is, what exactly determines the ability of a given molecule or atom to be able to pass across that cell membrane? Well, it turns out that two factors influence the ease with which our molecule or atom passes across our cell membrane. And these factors include the size of our molecule as well as the polarity of that molecule. Now, the size, act, the size aspect is a bit intuitive. So the large larger our molecule, the less likely it will pass through that cell membrane. Now, what about polarity? Why exactly does polarity influence the ability of the molecule to pass across the cell membrane? Well, to answer this question, we have to remember the structure of our cell membrane. The cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. That means there are two layers of phospholipids, and phospholipids themselves are predominantly fatty acids. So that means we have a predominant portion of the cell membrane that is nonpolar. Inside, uh, in fact, the entire intermediate space between these heads is basically nonpolar. And so that means nonpolar molecules, no matter how large, will be able to move across. And that's exactly why cholesterol, which is a large molecule, has no problem moving across our cell membrane. But even a very small atom that has a full positive or full negative charge, such as the sodium atom, will not be able to move across because it is very polar. It contains a full charge. So we see that the two things we should consider when determining whether a given molecule can make it across the phospholipid bilayer is the size of it and the polarity. And we have to weigh the two things together. So even though cholesterol is so big because it has no charge and, it, and it's essentially not polar at all, it will not have any problem moving across that cell membrane. Now, let's discuss a special type of cell transport known as passive diffusion. This is basically what we just discussed. So certain molecules, such as cholesterol and water, can travel through the cell membrane down its electrochemical gradient, much like a ball falls down the gravitational potential gradient. This process does not require any use of energy in a form of ATP, nor does it actually require the use of an integral protein. And this process is known as passive diffusion. Passive means we are not using any type of energy source. So basically, the example I can give is this marker falling down its potential gradient. So basically, we have a high potential, we have a low potential, and as soon as we let go, this marker moves down its gravitational potential gradient, and we have to expend absolutely no energy in moving this marker. In the same exact way, cholesterol and water will move down our electrochemical gradient, and we will have to use no source of energy for this type of movement. This is known as passive diffusion because we are not using energy and we are not using any type of transport protein, integral protein. Now, water is such a common molecule that undergoes passive diffusion that we give it a special type of name. So basically, the passive diffusion of water via a semi-permeable membrane is known as osmosis. And in osmosis, water always travels from a high water concentration to a low water concentration, or equivalently, from a low solute concentration to a high solute concentration. These two statements are exactly equivalent. And to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following three conditions. So let's discuss the hypotonic solution, the hypertonic solution, and the isotonic solution. In the hypotonic solution, we have a very high 
high concentration of solutes inside the cell, much higher than the solute concentration outside the cell. And so there will be a net movement of water into our cell. And so that means over time, the cell will enlarge and it could eventually potentially burst. Now this is known as the hypotonic solution and osmosis states that water always moves from a low solute concentration to a high solute concentration. In this case, it moves into our cell. Now a hypertonic solution is the opposite. Inside the cell, in the cytosol of the cell, we have a low solute concentration. On the outside, however, we have a high solute concentration and this implies that the net movement of water will be from the low solute to the high solute concentration or equivalently from the high water concentration inside to the low water concentration outside and so the net movement is towards the outside over time this cell will in fact get smaller it will shrink and finally Let's discuss the case of the isotonic solution. In the isotonic solution, we have the same exact solute concentration inside as outside of the cell. And so even though we still have a movement across the cell membrane of water, water still moves into and out of the cell, there is no net movement. The two rates are exactly the same. And so the shape and size of the cell will remain the same. And this type of transport, once again, is known as passive diffusion. So we are not using energy, we are not using any type of integral protein, and our molecules are moving down our electrochemical gradient. Now let's move on to a different type of cell membrane transport known as facilitated diffusion or passive transport. So certain molecules, such as sugar molecules, are too large and simply too polar to actually pass across our cell membrane via the process of passive diffusion. Yet these molecules must enter the cell if the cell is to actually survive for a long period of time. So such molecules can be assisted by integral proteins known also as transport proteins or carrier proteins and such a mode of transport is known as facilitated diffusion. Basically diffusion means we still have a movement down the electrochemical gradient but now we actually need a protein to move that molecule across. So basically, in this case, as in this case, we have the movement of our molecule down the electrochemical gradient. In this case, we don't, we don't use any type of protein and we don't use any energy. In this case, we don't use energy, but we do need our protein because, as in this case, we use sugar. Sugar is a large molecule. It's also very polar, and that's exactly why it will not be able to pass across our phospholipid bilayer because it's simply too polar. Now, let's move on to a transport known as active transport. So we saw that in passive diffusion and facilita facilitated diffusion, in both cases the molecules moved down the electrochemical gradient and so we needed no energy. In this case, in active transport, we see that we actually move the molecule against the electrochemical gradient. So in some cases, we need to move ions or molecules against their electrochemical gradient and one example is the neuron cell that basically uses active transport to create an electrochemical gradient to allow the propagation of our action potential our electrical signal and we'll discuss that in much greater detail when we get to that subject so basically this type of active transport requires not only energy it also requires a specialized type of integral protein and two types of active transport exist. 
In one active transport, we use the ATP energy molecule to move that molecule against the electrochemical gradient. In a second type of active transport, known as secondary active transport, we first use an ATP molecule to create an electric potential gradient, an electrochemical gradient, and then we use that electrochemical gradient to move our molecule across our uh, semi-permeable membrane. So to summarize, let's take a look at the following diagram. Let's begin with passive diffusion. So once again, passive diffusion means the molecule is either nonpolar, as the case is with cholesterol, or it's very small and only slightly polar, as the case is with water. And these types of molecules can simply move directly through our phospholipid bilayer, as the case is with cholesterol and water, without the use of any type of protein and down the electrochemical gradient, so we use no energy. Let's move on to facilitated diffusion. This is shown in diagram one. So this is facilitated diffusion. We see that our glucose contains all these hydroxy groups, and that means it's polar. So it it cannot simply go through that phospholipid bilayer. It's too large and it's too polar. So instead, what our cell membrane does is it uses a special type of protein, an integral protein, that basically allows the glucose to move from a high electric potential gradient to a low electric potential gradient, so down the electric potential gradient. And so in this case, we do not use any type of energy, but in the case of active transport, as we describe in section three, we basically use, we expend an ATP molecule to basically move our sodium as well as the potassium, which normally cannot move through the phospholipid bilayer because they have positive charge. We use this type of integral protein to basically move these molecules against our electrochemical gradient. So whenever we move things against the electrochemical gradient, that requires proteins as well as energy. But whenever we move things down the electrochemical gradient, that does not require any energy whatsoever. In some cases, we do not even require our integral protein, as the case is with passive diffusion. So these are the different modes by which our molecules can move across our cell membrane inside the eukaryotic cell.